Hey everybody, it's Craig Bechte here. In this video, we're going to have a closer look at the Godox GM6S 5.5 inch monitor. Now this is a 1920 by 1080 resolution, but you can hook up your 4K feeds to it. As you can see right now, I'm also recording it. It's a really great looking image. It really looks sharp. You can see all the colors. I'm using LUT feature and I'll show you how that works in a second. And also there's a camera control cable that I'm using with my Sony a7S III. We'll get into that too. So let's get right into the monitor. So there's a lot of shortcut function keys that you can access at the top. Also there's a menu key. I'm just going to click on that so we can see our menu come up. I'm trying not to get my hand to block the screen, but we're going to put the focus assist on here. And now you could see we have some different choices for the focus assist. We have red, green, purple, orange. So whatever is opposite what you're doing. So obviously if you're shooting in the forest, you probably want to pick whatever color works the best for you when it comes to focus. You can see here we've got the red enabled. I'm going to turn that off right now because focus is already set. Now also we have our zebras. Now when you do that, you have different settings for your zebras for them to come on. So you have 80, 85, 90, 95, 100, or 105 IRE. So that can indicate whether you have your highlights blowing out. So that's a really cool feature to have. Also we have our waveform. Now we have different choices for waveform. We can look at our waveform with RGB, or we can look at a histogram or a vector scope. And then we can also enable all of those settings at once. So if we turn that on and then touch the screen, you'd have a quick look here and see, look, okay, there's our waveform there. There's our histogram. There's our vector scope. We also have our audio meters. And also too, at the top, you could see we have battery indicator. We can also turn that off too, if we want to just have a clear screen. Now, this is a really cool feature that I like. This is a LUT, so you can upload different LUTs. So if you're used to using a certain LUT with your footage and you wanna see how it's gonna look while you're shooting, that's a great advantage. And it really pops the color. I'll show you how this looks. So you could see right now, if I just click this, this is no LUT. We get our menu to pop up, we go to LUT, and I could do LUT load. Now also we can compare what it looks like without the LUT. So if I click on here and then double click, you could see that if I'm over here, it's very flat. I'm shooting in S-Log3, S-Gamut3 Cine. It often looks very flat. So sometimes it's hard to gauge what your final image is going to look like. So you could see here, that's more about what the final image is going to look like. So that's helpful. And I'll show you how this works. So you double click here. We go to LUT. I'll turn off compared. We go to LUT manage. And then you can click here and you can import different LUTs that you have on an SD card. So if you're on a Mac, I found that you format the SD card for MS-DOS, then you can load the LUTs on and then import them here too. If we turn this off and we click select, you could see here that I've uploaded different LUTs that I can look at. Gamut LUT, I have a Phantom LUT, I also have a Leaming LUT here, and then I also have a Sony LUT. So I can experiment with different LUTs, whatever I'm gonna use in post, and I can make sure I get a good shot in camera. So that's pretty cool to be able to do that. So you can see I don't have a LUT enabled right there. I'm just gonna click on LUT, LUT load, and that was the last one that I had, and that's the Phantom LUT neutral, and that's sort of an Ari look for Ari colors. I have a video about that. I'll put it in the description box below if you wanna learn more about that. Now also we have assist functions here where we can enable grid lines, so if you use grid lines to compose your image, you have access to that. We have safety markers, a center marker. We have video aspect. So if I click on that, we can see at the bottom, we have 16 by 9, 15 by 9, 1, 3, 3, 1. So a lot of different aspect ratios too, if you're shooting anamorphic. So that's really a handy feature. Then we have our basics. We have our audio meter. I've been getting into false color lately. And as you can see here, if you click on it, you could see the little scale right here. So you could gauge exposures for someone's skin more accurately using false color than say using zebras or a waveform. So it's a really great tool once you know how to use it. So I'm gonna double click that again and we're gonna go back to basics. I'll turn off the false color and then we have monochrome. And then also I wanna show you too, we have pixel to pixel and we can zoom in right here. We have different zoom factors so if you're pulling focus, and look, you can also move it around the image. Just doing focus manually, then you can just pick different zoom ratios, and it's super handy. So that's back on basics, and then zoom, 
And then, like I said, you've got different zoom ratios. So we can go, if we go to display, we have color space controls. So I've got it set for origin, which is uh, the Sony S-Log, and then I apply a LUT. But you can also just go straight up 709 right from the beginning. You can also control the brightness. Now this is a 1200 nit brightness display and it's 8-bit color. We also control our contrast, our saturation, sharpness, RGB, and this is good if you want to do a custom calibration. You can adjust your RGB if you have the right software. We can go to our system here and we have user settings. So user one, two, and three. We also have language options. And this is where we turn our battery on and off. So if you're using a battery source, you can monitor that. But if it bothers you, you can turn it off. Now I should mention there's three different power sources for this. You can use a Sony NPF style battery. You can also charge this by USB-C. Also, there's a DC in charging port and a DC out. So you can take the power from this and go somewhere else. We have an HDMI in and HDMI out. We also have a audio connection for listening to audio. And if you have the right control cable, you can also control your camera. So we'll get into that in a second. At the top, we have shortcut keys. I'll just show you what those look like. Our camera control on or off. So that's for your camera control cable. You can see here we have our options for recording, for our ISO, our shutter. So it's great if you are, say, on a gimbal and you don't want to touch your camera and you have your monitor hooked up to your camera, you can make these adjustments on your monitor, which is super cool to be able to do that. We have our LUT switch, so you can see on and off. So that's without our LUT, that's with our LUT, big difference there. And I'm just going to turn the camera control cable off so we get that off our screen. Also, we have a quick access button here, a shortcut to focus assist on and off. Then we also have a quick access button to false color. And that just makes your most commonly used functions easy to access without having to go through the menu. There's a mount on the top, the bottom, and the side. So you can mount the monitor in various different ways. There's an image flip. So if you're mounting this upside down for some reason, sometimes that happens, you can flip the image, which is super handy. It comes with a few different things. So you get a monitor mount. So you can mount this, say, on a cage. You get a housing with some Velcro and you get a Velcro sun hood. So you just pop this on and then you pop on the sun hood. So you have a sun hood that comes with this as well. For adjusting your monitor mount, it comes with an Allen key. And you also get three different HDMI cables. So regular HDMI to HDMI, HDMI to HDMI mini, and HDMI to HDMI micro. So all in all, I think it's a really good monitor at this price point. So if you have any comments or questions about the Godox GM6S, you can ask them in the comment section below. Also, I'll put a link to where you can find out more about this 5.5 inch monitor. That'll be in the description box as well. If you found any of these tips helpful, just hit that like button. And also if you're not already a subscriber, just hit that subscribe button. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions about it, again, just ask them in the comment section. I'll get back to you. All right, thanks for watching this video. It's Craig Beckley here, and I'll see you in the next one.